Alright, hello and welcome back to Let's Play yet another No Name Game game. Today's No Name Game game is, of course, Boogie Wings. Well, the crowd seems to love it, so let's jump right in. The Great Ragtime Show! But you weren't expecting that from a game called Boogie Wings, although in retrospect you probably should have. Boogie Wings is an awesome title. So the first button is a shoot, and that's right, you can shoot down the paratroopers too. No more letting pesky people survive. And, oh gosh, if you haven't noticed by now, there's this crazy hook. But first I'll turn on auto fire for fun. Oh my gosh, that seems to have broken the game. Just the way I like it. So if you turn on auto fire enough, and then, good gosh. Seriously? Okay, so if you press the button fast enough, then you activate hyper lightning mode, aka cheater mode. So the first button is a nice happy shot, the second button controls your crane arm, and by that I mean then you throw what you've got in your crane arm. The third button just hangs out there, I guess. Oh gosh, it's even got the rolling counters, like how they used to have on clocks back in the day. On like that weird time when like, it was analog technology powered by digital circuits. Oh nice, we even get to choose what stage? Fortunately, I'm obligated to go through sequentially, but dang. And it's got music strangely reminiscent of even a Konami game, or um, the one with the opossum. Rocket Knight Adventures. And the whole thing's got like an awesome 1920s sort of theme, feel, and aesthetic, so I believe the term is steampunk. It's pretty great, all in all. In fact, you don't even die if you get hurt too much. Is there some sort of... Oh my god, oh. I thought you could get into the horse, which doesn't make any sense at all in a game where you're in an airplane already. Well, that's great. It is kind of annoying that you have to kind of um, work for your own bombs. But then again, lots of games don't even really have bombs. It's just kind of shot. Oh, that's awesome! If you die, then you can <laughs> just jump out and then... <laughs> oh my god, this game just got twice as awesome! So you don't even die if you fall out of your airplane. That just means you get to hijack someone else's airplane. Let's try Auto Fire Level 2. There we go. Just slow enough that we don't have constant cheater mode activated. And yet fast enough that I don't need to... That's hilarious if I just press auto-fire fast enough. So is there any sort of crazy button that just lets me get out of my machine? Oh cool! It doesn't even seem like, um... Huh. I mean, it, it, most games, like, they kind of make you crash. Let's see. So there's no real shortcut for getting out of the airplane, which, okay, I can accept that. Although it does seem a little crazy to go through all of the effort to putting in the extra vehicles, only for me to not be able to use them so easily. But it does seem unusually generous of the game to not, like, instantly kill me if I crash into, um, objects that I'm flying along. I mean, it's... a lot of games derive, like, a lot of difficulty from just you constantly not being able to, like, you have to watch out for terrain and not crash into it. But this game, it's just like, whatever, man, play and have fun! And honestly, I am. What other game can you throw a horse at someone? Oh, sweet! Now I'm in the horse! Again, why did they not let you just jump out of the airplane? That'd be awesome! You just, like, jump out of the airplane, run into the horse, shoot everyone, and then jump out. Oh, cool. So I guess the, um, idea is to... No? So you hold down and B and then you can rush out of the horse and get into something else. Oh my god, this is so awesome. That's really crazy. The best part of the game comes 
after you've gotten hit once. So you have to get damage to enjoy the best part of this game. Kind of makes you wonder, it's like, which, how should I play? Should I play for realsies, or should I play for funsies? <laughs> Even has crazy, terrible voice acting. That's the best. And we've got rocket suits. Well, okay, machine suits. The likes of which we haven't even seen since forever. Now we've got a motorcycle? Will this game never end? This is awesome. Although I do prefer the rocket suit. And then the jump is nice and generous, so you can, like, get into whatever you want. Suddenly the game switched to, like, a horror thing. But, oh my god. Like, there are... It's a little tricky for a game to just kind of capture your attention instantly. But this game, it's really done it. I mean, even from the title, Boogie Wings, you just know it's gonna be rock solid, and it's gonna be awesome, and it's gonna be, like, the best kind of... The guy's picking up coffins as he goes along and throwing it at the boss, like, automatically. This game. Oh my god. What is this... <laughs> oh, wow. How is this game... How have I never heard about this game? This game is beyond awesome. And... <laughs> So, so it plays as a shoot 'em up until you get hit, then it just plays like Contra. Except you can get into vehicles a la Metal Slug, but then you don't even have to if you don't want to. And then everything's a lot more automated, so it's it's not even as inconvenient. Oh, wow. I mean, it is... let's see, can you jump out of your plane? No, nah, I don't think so. Oh, but at least you can't destroy destroyable, um, ships and whatnot. Gosh, bright visuals, an awesome soundtrack, a hilarious and awesome gameplay mechanic, and, like, general aesthetic, style, setting. I- this- this game has it all. It even summarizes your end of round, uh, progress with, like, Nice little flapping things. I don't know at all what they just said, but this is awesome. It even has like a jazzy theme. Jazzy themes! Most games go for like sort of an out and out kind of rock craziness, but this game goes all the way jazziness. Well, I'm guessing the uh... Oh my god! Did I just capture some sort of plasma beam? Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, man. And you're just like this whirly gig of destruction, just kind of throwing people around. And then you get out of your airplane, and you're still a whirly gig of destruction. Flying around, shooting everything inside. And I'm kind of starting to see why they didn't let you, like, jump out of your plane. Because you probably preferentially want to stay in your plane, and then... Let's face it, you're going to be seeing a lot of the same kinds of... Uh, machines, or will you? Because I mean, this one's new, and this is like what the second stage. Well, because I mean, Metal Slug. Yeah, there were different vehicles, but it really only maintained like uniqueness by like only giving you access to some of the vehicles some of the time. Like you basically have to uh, just rely on stages like two or three if you want for the thing. Well, okay. But it doesn't ever really give you the same vehicle twice. Whereas this game, it just kind of it just lit legitimately has a lot of vehicles to play as. And he gets an, a blimp out of nowhere? <laughs> he doesn't even, like, jump back into his old plane. He just gets into a blimp. He just, like, found him flying around. Oh, this game is awesome. Oh, no. No! Wow! It's, it's like an... <laughs> it's like his lifeboat blimp. Oh, my God. Out of credits already? Dang! Oh, wow. And you can, like, hang out on ships. Like, it's surprisingly hard to kill this guy. Although, the, I mean, I guess I could gripe about the difficulty of, like, throwing that bomb thing, but at the same time, the fact that they even implemented, like, suitable physics to, um, do that, that's really impressive. I don't, I don't see any sort of health gauge or anything. Ooh. Nice. Of course, bombs were made to be used. Aw, oh, you can't fly under the screen. I mean, the game does seem to, like, restrict you a lot and like, where you can go, but at the same time, 
maybe not so much. And it is pretty tricky to like learn how to swirl your hook in a circle. Because I mean, you kind of do it a couple times and then it doesn't quite work out. Oh wow. Even mandatory off-road sessions. And you can duck even. No, no other controls, but they could have made a game just, like, just out of the, um, on-foot sections, and it would still be awesome. If, oh my gosh. And we've got, like, Amiga-style graphics, too. This game is crazy. Who made this and why? Because they are amazing. I want more of this. Sadly, it doesn't seem to have, like, any style. It, it doesn't seem to be a similar style to, like, anything else I've seen, so I'm guessing they weren't necessarily a popular developer, but dang, they definitely earned it. Like, they could have just made an on-rails game like or okay, an on-foot game like this, and yet they decided to turn it into a shoot-'em-up, too. That's awesome. Ooh, exploding barrels. <laughs> That's an elephant? <laughs> oh my god, I can just imagine the brainstorming sessions. They're like, okay, we need like a dozen awesome vehicles. <laughs> One of them's like, let's have an elephant with diamond tusks, and they're like, dude, we already did that. Oh my gosh. Half a dozen versions of tank. It's an elephant! And I mean, maybe that's not quite as impressive because it was a Metal Slug 3, but we'll kind of overlook that because it's a little bit of a hidden area, and that, I hate that ice cave. It's, it's so hard. It's so easy to die in that one, and like, all you get is the silly elephant, which... I mean, elephants are cool, but they don't make the best ordinance. Speaking of elephant, oh, oh, we even got the robot suit, so it's like kind of choose your favorites. Oh, is there a timer or anything that we should be watching out for? And then what's this balance meter? Um, let's see. Oh, okay, so other ships don't seem to have the uh, crazy lightning sort of problem. Well, problem, you might say. But they don't seem to, like, just delve into complete cheapness after that. Wow. And it does actually look kind of like cannon fodder. I mean, we got the same sort of sensible soccer era sprites. <laughs> I'll get you for this? Um, more like I'll get you for this. Why are you not dead? I don't see a problem with this love. Oh, there we go. Actually, yeah, that's that's not something you see a whole lot in arcade games. Like, you don't necessarily see a lot of the uh, Amiga-style tiny sprites, where, like, you can fit a lot on the screen, but then everything's really tiny. Well, I mean, most arcade games like to go for, um... Actually, they like to go for uh, really big sprites, big, really detailed ones, which... I mean, there's nothing too bad with that, but then you kind of lose, like, the absolute chaos you can depict with something like this. Because, I mean, there's there's a lot of chaos going on screen with, like, Metal Slug, but can you imagine the chaos that can go on screen with this? <laughs> we just kind of hijacked one of their airplanes. And then, yeah, it's kind of even got like a sort of Gunstar Heroes sort of feel, where it's like you can choose what kind of stage you want. And it's got like that kind of crazy, like weird, what the heck is happening, this game is not like anything I've ever experienced before sort of vibe going on. Plus, how many arcade games have swing for the level select screen? Oh wow, well, I guess it's not quite as impressive. I mean, there isn't any parallax scrolling, but... Each game's gotta distinguish itself in its own way, and this game really kind of distinguishes itself via, like, the crazy levels of detail. Well, not, not quite detail, just like thoroughness of the environments. Like, it's not that everything on screen is insanely detailed, but it is like there's a ton of things on screen, and there are tons of disparate things on screen. 
like Metal Slug. I mean, yeah, there were a lot of things on screen, but it preferred a lot more to um, go for like having very detailed, bigger things versus like this game where it's like a ridiculous number of things on screen, even if each individual thing isn't necessarily fully detailed. Oh wow, and we even have to destroy like the pieces of art, or we even have to destroy the exhibits in the museum just to advance. This guy is quite morally dubious. <laughs> I just kind of love the basic premise of fly your airplane literally everywhere it can go. Presumably to destroy the bad guys, but I'm not even really sure he's on he's doing that even. What if the bad guys, the quote bad guys, are actually like the police and they're just trying to stop him from doing his crazy crime spree? Well, it's crazy destruction spree. <laughs> uh, video game cruelty potential. Oh, what? <laughs> I walk onto the stairs, then the airplane just immediately disappears. It's like, yeah, you can't have fun things. And <laughs> airplanes don't work like that. But this game is awesome, so it does not matter. Wow. This game is just like completely... I don't know. I don't want to say it's exactly the opposite of other cool arcade games around this era. But I mean, instead of like the modern sort of rock, you've got an old style swing jazz. Instead of like big detailed awesome... <laughs> ridiculously technical sprites, you've got a bunch of smaller sprites. Instead of being vertical, it's horizontal. Well, that's not so much. Instead of flying your plane or spaceship, in, fa in fact, most other ones have a spell. Oh, this is not going to turn out well. Oh, that's crazy. But yeah, most other pl places have like your ship being fl flown around in like a giant open area. I mean, you can't get any more open than space. Except this one's just kind of like flying your plane in every sort of confined space you can imagine. And some that they just made up on the spot. Um, let's see, you're playing, you're flying an airplane and not a crazy, uh, spaceship. Your character is like a lovable doofus versus like a train from birth pilot. Um, you've got digital counters instead of analog You've got analog, analog counters instead of digital counters. Silly Trojan, they shouldn't have had such a nice horse. Let's take it from them. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> it's like the Trojan War. It's like someone sees the Trojans and <laughs> give the horse to the Spartan or whatever. And then they see it, and then they get jealous. It's like, no, we're gonna steal it. In fact. It's, it's like Ocean's, Ocean's One or something. And then they steal the Trojan horse. And then they wake up in the morning. They're like, this was a bad. It's like I've made a terrible mistake. Oh my gosh, those elephants had to come from somewhere. And the best part is, this game. It really doesn't have a plot. I mean, it's just some guy flying his airplane everywhere it does not belong. That's right. 101 percentage. Oh, this probably kills. All in just in time for the holiday Christmas. Or Giftmas. Oh, we're kind of going for like the day before Christmas sort of thanks or Halloween. That's, that's right, the day before Christmas, Thanksgiving Eve. Um, we're going for a sort of kind of gloomy uh, Halloween Eve, no, 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 December, Christmas Eve, where it's like the scramble before, it's like, hey, can you get presents in time? Sadly, we missed out on a vehicle that seems like it's just stairs or something, and we're just picking up literally everything we can pick up. At least it cost us the end. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Well, at the very least, you can't destroy um, people. Although... God, everything but. Oh, what did I even grab? <laughs> this guy is just kind of like youthful Yahoo as he like kind of grabs anything he can find and just starts shooting it at people. 
It's got a walking flamethrower death machine. This is amazing. And even though I keep saying it's not really that detailed, there's still a sufficient level of detail for this to be like completely awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't see like every single nut and bolt and crazy sprite and gore glory like you can in the Metal Slug sort of series, but you can see, um, you can see like a fair bit of detail on like all of the things you're shooting, I guess. Actually, it is kind of weird, like comparing this to Metal Slug when it's technically a shoot 'em up. Although that being said, Metal Slug itself is kind of like a shoot 'em up. I mean, yeah, it's more, arguably more of a run and gun, but it plays a lot like a shoot 'em up. I mean, you have to dodge everything and then shoot everything. I mean, more like a bullet hell shoot 'em up. Whereas this game, I mean, it is kind of like Metal Slug in that it's. Um, yeah, well, okay, it's sort of like the characterization of Metal Slug, that it's it's, it's a technically a shoot 'em up, but it's also it's te kind of a shoot 'em up, kind of a run 'em gun. It's sort of everything. Although this game kind of goes in the opposite direction, where it's like the shoot 'em up first, run 'em gun second. That's right. Nothing screams Christmas a lot more than a secret underground base. Although I guess if you think about it, Santa kind of has his own sort of secret underground base, so maybe that does actually kind of scream Christmas now that I think about it. Yeah, massive corporations assembling giant weapons of dubious purpose. Although I feel like these guys would use their stuff more for taking over the world than um, spreading joy throughout all of the cosmos, but that's to each their own. I don't know, I'm to some, I'm pretty sure Santa seems like some sort of horrendous oppressor. Those are probably the people who are getting cold, though. Oh, this is gonna be fun, going upstream. Oh god, and you can't, you can't shoot diagonally without moving diagonally. Oh, it can even hold more than 10 credits? Well, I'd like to find out exactly how many credits, but that's something to do later. Oh, and it's daytime already! Somehow. <laughs> oh, so much chaos and mayhem. And the best part is, you're causing it. It's not even like the the opponents would do anything either. You're, you're basically just causing it to a bunch of mayhem. Well, this one I feel is getting a little repetitive. I mean, the giant crazy caves are helping it, but... Yeah. Well, then again, I mean, you can't really expect every stage to be, like, completely kick-ass, like, 24-7. Because, I mean, you still need to come up with, like, five or some odd stages, and you do want to save your best for first and then last. So you got to kind of put your mediocre in the middle. Although, I wonder if this game is a final level. Because this game seems like the kind that might actually only have, like, the five or so levels that they promised. But I mean, hey, if they probably hired a whole studio to figure out all that swing stuff, they probably got to make the most out of it. I was kind of wondering how I would destroy that. Turns out I would use more collateral damage to destroy it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Th I mean, yeah, it's technically a shoot 'em up, but it transitions so ably into a run and gun that I'm just kind of surprised if it's even started as a shoot 'em up. That's right, it's Christmas time again. <laughs> oh boy. Nothing's gonna happen there? For sure, something would explode. It would be like a little secret back there, but... And that's right, not only did the 1920s have HD TVs, they had HD TVs the size of billboards. I thought I would grab an enemy play and I grabbed a banner instead. Banners, the most ferocious weapons. Uh oh, can you crab dogs? No, you can't? Okay, good. 
But what do I even have on my hook right now? Oh, is that a pogo stick? <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought I'd seen everything but a pogo stick. Okay, that's just pushing it to a new... I don't even know. Although, good golly, is this... Is this level like 10 minutes or something? Good gosh. That's right, it's evil Santa now. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, he's being nice, he's giving us presents. Oh, I thought I was I thought I was joking there. I thought he wasn't. Yeah, I could use something new. At least they kind of give you a bomb, but it's it's not quite as good as you'd ever want it to be. What is this trophy of? Gosh, it's like one of those store Santa's gone wrong. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Not, not the hardest boss fight, but... Isn't is it gonna end now? Aren't you even halfway done? I guess you can kind of see how far you've come along by uh, how destroyed he looks, but... Yeah, I mean, I guess this game isn't like constant thrills, but at the same time, I mean, it kind of... I don't want to say it loses momentum, but it just stops gaining momentum at such a crazy rate. I mean, I think that is because it like, the way it starts out, it's so awesome. Just in case you thought Robot Santa was real Santa or something, there's real Santa. Alright, so I'm beginning to realize that the 280 out of whatever, that's how many kills you have and not necessarily the percentage of accuracy or anything. Well, let's see if this game finally does delve into rockiness. It's Detroit Rock City. Yeah, even the Rock City theme is kind of jazzy. Just the way it should be. Can you grab random parts off of the airplane? No, you can't. That'd be pretty awesome. You just kind of like disassemble the airplanes as you go along. Although, yes, yeah, lesser airplanes, you can just like straight up uh, rip off parts of them. Or no, like straight up destroy them. Or I mean grab them with your hook and kill people. Oh, man. Well, okay. The, admittedly, the car looks a lot cooler than it plays, but... Oh, okay, a moped. I gotta see this. <laughs> He's just on, like, a little skateboard. He's just flying around. Let's get some real heavy artillery in here. By that, I mean the horse. Oh, the pogo stick. I've been wondering how this works. <laughs> He just bounces. Oh. How uncharacteristically realistic. That machine gun car can't shoot down. I'm a little cons I'm a little curious to see like if this got any sort of ports or anything. Cause this seems like the crazy kind of game that actually was ported to a uh, PC. Not a whole lot of those back in the day. Oh, we don't get anything for destroying the sign? Ah. The preferred route was not in the building. Even it says Detroit Rock City, just in case you were a little um, unconvinced that this was actually the Detroit Rock City. It is Detroit Rock City. Dang it. 
Dang, those bombs. Oh, wow. We're just getting more and more and more. Oh, the fun never ends. I don't see why this isn't really the Christmas level. You get bombs everywhere. I wonder how long we can balance in the air. Oh, it seems to have so much inertia. I don't know, something about the physics. Oh, there we go. Because I'm trying to get into like a parabolic arc into the sky, but... It seems to like to fall quite a bit too fast. So, I mean, the physics, while definitely impressive for the time, are not necessarily the most realistic. Oh, and we can't even get our way in there. That is weird that they would, like, put so much effort and, like, spent into building, like, intricate and detailed scenes, yet not let you explore, like, half of them. There we go, though. Now we're into the fray. I don't think you can actually get past that crazy whatever you want to call it. Oh, it's a bomb factory. That would be the best. You just kind of like sit around and pick up the bombs and bomb the bombs. It was a Christmas present. I don't think you can actually do anything with, like, what would be vehicles. Like, you can even pick up the enemy soldiers, but you can't, like, throw the would be vehicles and do anything with them. God, I really think that Christmas stage was, like, 10 minutes. Interesting stage to put most of your effort into. Oh, that is great. Actually, surprisingly, it makes it easier on foot. At the very least, you can. Uh, shoot straight upwards and not have to worry about getting hit all the time. Of course, you could just hang out here and then do the uh, crazy lightning trick. But then after a while, you wouldn't be able to do auto fire anymore. Auto fire actually takes a surprising amount out of you. Same thing with talking too every day. You kind of talk. You try to talk for like two hours a day, and then you're gonna go deaf. I mean blinds. I mean. Mute. You might also go deaf and blind too, who knows. Really? No bombs or anything? We just have to stand here and take it out inch on high inch? I do kind of like that there's no, like, sort of cheap way to, um, just kind of kill all the bosses cheaply really quickly, but at the same time, I mean. Enough is enough. If you're not really, really going to have the bosses do a whole lot against me, you might as well just let them go down easily. Of course, maybe everything is supposed to be a lot easier with the airplane. Well, and... Do we have a final bonus stage? I'm assuredly we do. jazzy theme, huh? But wow, for the last stage, they really started making, like, just stuff happen. Like, it doesn't even necessarily all make sense, but it's coming at you and it's making stuff happen and it is exploding. It's exciting, dang it. Actually, I guess it's not quite so hard when you actually shoot at things. Oh, but now we finally got parallax scrolling. Which is actually a little weird when you think about it, because I don't think there was a whole lot of parallax scrolling anywhere else in the game. Oof. Evidently, it was all saved up for here. I mean, it does add in that extra teensy bit of visual splendor to the final bit. But at the same time, I mean... Some of those other uh, environments were looking a little stale after a while. And they could definitely use the uh, extra kick that... Um, Parallax scrolling gives to uh, great scenery. Gosh, is this game a shoot 'em up or a run and gun? 
The environments are all run and gun, but the weapons are more or less shoot 'em up, so. I don't know, you tell me. And I wonder if there's some sort of cool little backstory to it, like. Ooh, traction belts actually move you, even though you're an airplane and you're in the air. Figure that one out. I wonder if there was a cool little, um, backstory where. It was like initially conceived as a run and gun, but then at the last minute they were like, hey, we, we need to make a shoot 'em up. Everyone's making shoot 'em ups. And then for some crazy reason they decided to change everything about the game. I also wonder too if this came like before or after, I think it was R Type or something, where you've got the little grapply hook beam thing that can like shoot people. I, can, I don't know, it wasn't. Was it R Type? No. It was one of those kinds of games. <laughs> and somehow I managed to unlock the blimp mode. I guess because that's like technically a cliff, but yeah. And I still haven't quite been able to figure out what the balance thing is about. Oh, maybe as you shoot more things than you switch up in gears until finally you reach sort of the max. And then maybe that's the lightning thing. Does that make sense? Is that what's happening here? Probably not. Oh, what the... Can't even grab them, they're just like completely safe. Well, okay. Safe until they made that crazy hundred foot drop. I wish you could kind of like control the claw around with like the other two buttons, but then... You could kind of use the claw as like sort of protection, like insurance against if people try to smash into you right away. Huh. But then yeah, if you stop shooting, then um, the, the gauge sort of resets. And then unfortunately, yeah, I don't think you get any sort of gear or anything when you're not in the shoot em up plane. Which, quite frankly, is very disappointing, but... You die again and you get it again, so, yeah. Doesn't seem like it'd be a great game to one credit clear, like it's never really ch challenging you to win. It's just kind of like, kind of handing you awesome stuff to do. First and last time there's a dialogue in this game. We tried to talk with you, but you wouldn't listen. You were too busy rampaging around. Alright, I'm ready to listen. And that G, maybe you shouldn't kill everyone so much. He told us that every life was precious. I can't quite tell if this guy is like the bad guy or the good guy. He had one weapon capable of mass destruction. He walked around wearing a red jacket. Also had a red biplane. This, this guy's clearly not wanted to work together with them from the start, but let's just see what he says. He must repay us for the trouble you've caused. <laughs> he probably should. sure like how we were supposed to answer or like how things would have been different because it seems like we're fighting that guy anyway so even if we had said yeah we'll team up with you then uh this does feel familiar and then yeah i was gushing about us using being able to use horses and stuff I, I can't quite tell if this is the first level all over again or not this has to be the final level. Well, I guess it doesn't have to be. That'd be really weird, though, that he would, like, send you back to this level without, like, saying anything. It's like, this is back to the first level. What are you doing? Yeah, 
Yeah, this is the one where we like got into this Zeppelin thing. And then we just kind of destroyed everything. Are we supposed to like not do things differently this time around? And also, some might say I was naive for saying to trust him. He's naive for trusting this guy. Evidently, he's supposed to be not destroying them all around this time, but I guess not. It's pretty great. He's like, hey, join us. Even though he knows full well that you should not. He should not allow you to join him. Yeah, I, I really feel like this is deja vu, and I've already done all this. And it's the first stage all over again. Let's try playing around with uh, lightning mode this time. Oh, of course we can't do it with this. There we go, auto fire on. And constant lightning fire, let's go. Yeah, what the heck? So I think the game just like accidentally loot. Well, maybe not accidentally when I chose to join him. Oh, maybe this is what he was talking about. You'll pay for this. Now I'm not allowed to join up with him. So I guess I'll try and play until I lose, which shouldn't be too long. And then we'll see if there's an awesome intro credit sequence, and then we'll just pretend like I completed the game like all the other shoot 'em ups. Sounds good to me. How does it sound to you? Yeah, I would like in though. Hey, hey guy. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to end this a little bit sooner than later, so. Oh, come on. How many lives does he have? Oh, come on. How many lives does he have? There we go. No, come on. How many lives does he have? Did he just make that guy explode? Cause, come on. How many lives does this guy have? Come on, how many lives does this guy have? Jeez, what the heck happened there? Oh, hey. Awesome. Oh my god. So you're controlling all of them at the same time. And then it's nice, sharp, responsive. So, otherwise it would be an average name entry screen, but you'd get a name like all of the stat it keeps like track of five stats all at once that's pretty awesome that that deserves a mention in and of itself it's not every day you get to enter in your name like five times at once on the name entry screen 1992 good gosh that was get becoming reminiscent of like later 19 mid 1990s shoot 'em ups to late 1990s shoot 'em ups I mean, I can kind of see that the uh, graphic style wasn't quite so detailed, but at the same time, like, it definitely made up for it, like, every other imaginable characteristic, perhaps even heart. And then, of course, we got the constant steampunk swing theme. That's, that's pretty great. Well, it doesn't seem like... Well, okay, there's, there's got to be some sort of, like, backstory or who this guy is. Maybe he, like, killed some dudes and he's, like, on the run. Yep, I know how to play. Figured it out on my own. Yep, unless it's gonna say something cool, like you can jump into the other guy's hook and shoot around there, then I don't think this uh, little how to play screen is any worth anything. Use animals and vehicles for extra action. Ay -ay -ay. <laughs> I kind of like how they say that it's like use it for action. Berserker elephant. Oh, you can! I was waiting for this the entire how to name it or how to play screen. You can pick up your ally. That's awesome. 
That really is. Now get to the part where we've introduced our intrepid hero. Psh, I do say the cat is the best one. God, really? That's it? You know... The Great Ragtime Show! I guess there aren't really any clues. Like, he just kind of runs into a plane and starts killing everyone. I dare say he started it. Well, okay, I dare say they started it, but he could have started it. I don't know. It's, it's a little complicated. He said, she said. It all got crazy. Oh, cool. This guy has its own little momentum. Well, I don't want to play through this game for a third time. So, on that note, this cat's got a scat.